I'm standing in central Nairobi and it's very busy. There's loads of traffic, people everywhere, but there's something in particular that stands out from the crowd, and that's the Matatus. Every inch of these privately owned minibuses is covered with artwork. Think bright colours, graffiti, flashing LED lights, and music blaring out of the huge speakers. 70% of the population use them to get around. Now I'm wandering down Tom Boyer Street to meet Brian Wanyama, the founder of Matwana Matatu Culture, a project where he documents Matatus on his blog and social platforms. So how did he get into it? There was a need to preserve the culture. Since at that time it was really endangered. We had a lot of police crackdowns. Uh, we had uh, a lot of strippings. They used to remove all the graffiti. So I saw like this is something that the, the world needs to see it so that we can, we can give these artists um, a platform where they can showcase their art. There are around 60,000 Matatus here in the capital alone, and they're cheap, costing around a dollar for a ride. But the Matatus are doing more than just taking people from A to B at the moment. They're also being used to spread a message of peace as the August the 8th election approaches. Brian tells me about his hashtag Matatus for Peace initiative. The drivers have been uh, playing music that is is uh, friendly to everyone. Like you know, in Kenya we have a lot of uh, tribes, or, so you will find maybe a certain route wants to play like Kikuyu music, Luo music. But we've encouraged people not to just play one type of music. So they play something that everyone understands. Even the way they speak to the customers and all that, they use a common language. So they either use Sheng, Swahili, or English not vernacular. They have been handing out stickers. Actually, the stickers even weren't enough. The reception was so warm, as in we have supplied stickers in Nairobi, Mombasa, Eldoret. So many people have showed interest. They wanted to continue for even a longer period, since ours is ending on August 12th. Later we meet up with Brian's colleague, Jake Smatolis. He's taking pictures of Matatus being spray-painted at a garage in Eastleigh. He tells me the 2007 election violence is just one of the reasons he joined Brian's campaign. I was 10 and most of my friends moved away because of the violence. I wouldn't like for the guys to move away, like the way guys are moving up country in their, like their native land where they came from, so they see it's safer there than in the city where people from different communities. Some of them might not come back and it will put gaps in different people's lives and businesses, in their social lives, and their education lives. The other day I was listening to a certain show and they were saying, I won't know you're a different tribe until a politician tells me you're a different tribe. Because the other days we are living as usual, but how comes when it comes to election period? That's when I know there's a saying in Swahili that under our skin, all our blood is red. So I'm praying that we won't be divided because of politics. And while I was there, I also met Sara Fina Mumbi. She's one of the first female Mutatu designers in Nairobi. When I finished high school, that's when I got interested to know what Mutatu art is all about. And what's it like being one of the only women who do it? I face a lot of challenges, especially when it comes to competition. You have to game up, because if you can't game up, you can't sell your art, you can't be known by people. Another thing I can say is um, the environment where I work in, you find that I'm the only girl working there, so sometimes it's difficult. You find that most guys want to, to be behind you to see what you are doing. Yeah, you, can, you can imagine the tension. You have to be tough. You have to be unique, you have to be creative for you to survive in this industry. How did your parents and your friends react when you told them that you were going to go into this industry? They thought I was joking because they were like, no, this job is for men, you can't. But for my mom, she used to tell me that you can, you can make it. If only you believe in yourself. 